some people advise and say, just create a question and answer system. And on the other hand, other people say, just create an AI that behaves more like a tool than agent. However, these recommendations do not eliminate all safety concerns. And it's actually a serious debate as to what kind of system would have the best chance of being safe. Here, according to Nick Bostrom, there are four categories or let's say castes. One, tools. Second, journeys. Third, sovereigns and oracles. I'm gonna explain what Nick Bostrom means by these types. And I'm gonna discuss these categories and their interrelationships as well. And in our effort to find a solution to the control challenge, each presents a unique set of advantages and drawbacks. Now let's see together what actually Dr. Bostrom means by these categories. An oracle is a way of getting information. It could take inquiries in natural language and respond with text. Only yes and no queries are accepted by the oracle. Thus, it may uh, output its best estimate with a single bit, or perhaps with a few more bits to indicate how confident it's in the answer. An oracle uh, that responds to open-ended inquiries will require a metric to square potential truthful responses in terms of their appropriateness or informativeness. Building an oracle that is fully domain generally capable of responding to natural language queries is an AI complete task in any scenario. If that were possible, an AI that could reasonably comprehend both human intentions and human language could undoubtedly be created. And oracles with domain limited forms of superintelligence are also conceivable. For example, one could conceive of uh, a mathematics oracle which would only accept queries posed in a formal language, but which would be very good at answering such questions. Such a mathematics oracle would form a stepping stone toward domain general superintelligence. And oracles with superintelligence in extremely limited domains already exist. A pocket calculator can be viewed as a very narrow oracle for basic arithmetical questions. An internet search engine can be viewed as a very partial realization of an oracle with a domain that encompasses a significant part of general human declarative knowledge. And these domain limited oracles are tools rather than agents. In what follows uh, through the term oracle, we refer to question answering systems that have domain general superintelligence, unless otherwise stated. And uh, to make a general superintelligence function as an oracle, we could apply both motivation selection and capability control. Motivation selection for an oracle may be easier than for other castes of superintelligence because the final goal in an oracle could be comparatively simple. We would want the oracle to give truthful, non-manipulative answers and to otherwise limit its impact on the world. Applying a domesticity method we might require that the oracle should use only designated resources to produce its answer. For example, uh, we might stipulate that it should base its answer on a preloaded corpus of information, such as a storage snapshot of the internet, and that it should use no more than a fixed number of computational steps. And to avoid incentivizing the oracle to manipulate us uh, into giving it easier questions, which would happen if we gave it to the goal of maximizing its accuracy across all questions we will ask it, we could give it the goal of answering only one question and to determine it immediately upon delivering its answer. The question would be preloaded into its memory before the program is run. And to ask a second question, we will reset the machine and run the same program with a different question preloaded in memory. And subtle and potentially treacherous challenge arise even in specifying the relatively simple motivation system needed to drive an oracle. Suppose, uh, for example, that we come up with some ex uh, explanation of what it means for the AI to minimize its impact on the world subject to achieving certain results or to use only designated resources in preparing the answer. What happens if the AI, in the course of its intellectual development, undergoes the equivalent of a scientific revolution involving a change of its basic ontology? 
Uh, we might initially have explicated impact and designated resources using our own ontology. But just as we have abundant ontological categories that were taken for granted by scientists in previous ages, so a superintelligent AI might discover that some of our current categories are predicted on fundamental misconceptions. The cold system of AI undergoing an ontological crisis needs to be resilient enough that the spirit of its original goal content is carried over, charitably transposed into the new key. And also making an oracle safe uh, through the use of motivation selection might be far from trivial. It might nevertheless be easier than doing the same for an AI that roams the world in pursuit of some complicated goal. And this is an argument for preferring that the first superintelligence be an oracle. And another point in favor of an oracle first pass is the greater susceptibility of an oracle to capability control. All the standard boxing methods apply here. And in addition, uh, there may be methods that are distinct, distinctively applicable to oracles. For example, consider the risk that an oracle will answer questions not in a maximally truthful way, but in such a way as to subtly manipulate us into promoting uh, its own hidden agenda. And one way to slightly mitigate this uh, threat could be to create multiple oracles, each with a slightly different code and slightly different information base. A simple mechanism could then compare the answers given by the different oracles and only present them for human viewing if all the answers agree. While one must assume that any superintelligent domain general oracle would have about the existence of other oracles, it might be feasible to hide some implementation details of each oracle uh, from the views of the others. And if the oracles are not able to communicate with one another, it might then be difficult for them to coordinate on how to answer our questions manipulatively. And there are many, many ways of deviating from the truth and the oracles may not all agree on which of these deviations is most attractive. Whereas the trust itself is a a shelling point. So if the oracles achieve consensus, it might be a sign that they gave the true answer. Uh, other than that, an oracle would ideally be trustworthy in the sense that we could safely assume that its answers are always accurate to the best of its ability. But even an untrustworthy oracle could be useful. Uh, that is, we could ask such an oracle questions of a type for which it's difficult to find the answer, but easy to verify whether a given answer is correct. Many mathematical problems are of this kind. If we are wondering whether a mathematical proposition is true, we could ask the oracle to produce a proof or disproof of the proposition. And finding the proof may require insight and creativity beyond our ken. But checking a purported proof's validity can be done by a simple mechanical procedure. And if it's expensive to verify answers, we can randomly select a subset of the oracle's answers for verification. If they are all correct, we can assign a high probability to most of the other uh, answers also being correct. This trick can give us a bulk discount on trustworthy answers that will be costly to verify individually. And there could be important issues on which we could benefit uh, from an uh, augural pointer toward the correct answer, even if we had to actively distrust the provenance. For example, one might ask for the solution to various technical or philosophical problems that may arise in the course of trying to develop more advanced motivation selection methods. And if we had a proposed AI design alleged to be safe, we could ask an oracle whether it could be identify any significant flow in the design and whether it could explain any such flow to us in 20 words or less. And questions of this kind could elicit valuable information. Caution and restraint will be required. However, for us not to ask too many such questions and not to allow ourselves to partake of too many details of the answers given to the questions we do ask, uh, lest we give the untrustworthy oracle opportunities to work on our psychology. It might not take many bits of communication for an AI with the social manipulation superpower to bend us to its will. And even if the oracle itself works exactly as intended, there is a risk that it will be misused. 
one obvious dimension of this problem is that an Oracle AI would be a source of immense power, which could give a decisive strategic advantage to its operator. This uh, power might be illegitimate and it might not be used for the common good. And another more subtle but no less important dimension is that the use of an oracle could be extremely dangerous for the operator herself. A similar worry uh, arise also uh, for other hypothetical casters of superintelligence. Uh, we will explore them more thoroughly uh, in video 13. Right now, uh, we are studying video 10s. And suffice it here to note that the protocol determining which questions are asked, in which sequence, and how the answers are reported and disseminated could be of great significance. One might also consider whether to try to build a Oracle in such a way that it uh, would refuse it uh, refuse to answer any question in cases where it predicts that the answering would have consequences classified as as uh, catastrophic according to some rough and already create criteria. <laughs> well, a genie is a system that carries out commands. It receives a high level command, executes it, and then stops to wait for the next one. And a sovereign is a system with an unrestricted mandate to engage in global operations in support of broad and potentially extremely long-term goals. And these models uh, for what a superintelligence should be and do may appear to be very different from one another, yet they are not as drastically different as they might initially appear to be. Let's start with a genie. With a genie, one already sacrifices the most attractive property of an oracle, the opportunity to use boxing methods. While one might consider creating a physically confined genie, for example, one that can only construct objects inside a des designated volume, a volume that might be sealed off by a hardened wall or a barrier loaded with explosive charges rigged to detonate, uh, detonate uh, if the containment is breached, uh, and it would be difficult to have much confidence in the security of any such physical containment method against a superintelligence equipped with uh, versatile manipulators and construction materials. And um, even if it were somehow possible to ensure a containment as secure as uh, that which can uh, be achieved for an oracle, it's not clear how much we would have gained by giving the superintelligence direct access to uh, manipulators compared to requiring it instead to output a blueprint that we could expect, uh, inspect and uh, then use to achieve the same result ourselves. And again is speed and uh, convenience from bypassing the human intermediary seems hardly worse at the loss of uh, foregoing the use of the stronger boxing methods available to contain an oracle. And if one were creating a genie, it would be desirable to beat it so that it would obey the uh, intention behind the command rather than its literal meaning. Since a literalistic genie might have a propensity to kill the user and the, the rest of humanity on its first use, for reasons explained in the video on malignant failure modes in video eight. More broadly, it will seem important that the genies seek a charitable and what human beings would regard as a reasonable interpretation of what is being commanded and that the genie may be uh, motivated to carry out the command under such an interpretation rather than under under the realistic interpretation. And the idea genie would be a super butler rather than an autistic servant. And a genie endowed uh, with such a super butler nature, however, would not be far from qualifying for membership in the ca cast of sovereigns. Consider, uh, for, for comparison, uh, the idea of building a sovereign with the final goal of obeying the spirit of the commands we would have given had we built a genie rather than a sovereign. Such a sovereign would mimic a genie. Being super intelligent, this sovereign would do a good job at guessing what commands we would have given a genie. Uh, would there be really uh, be any important difference between such a sovereign and the genie or pressing on the distinction from the other side uh, consider that a super intelligent genie may likewise be able to predict that uh, commands what will give it. And what then, uh, what then is gained from having it avoid the actual issues before it acts? 
And one might think that a big advantage of a genie over a sovereign is that if something goes wrong, we could issue uh, the genie with a new command to stop or to reverse the effects of the previous actions. Whereas a sovereign would just push on regardless of uh, our protests. But this appearance safety advantage for the genie is largely say illusory. The stop or undo button on a genie works only for Benin failure modes. In the case of a malignant failure on which, for example, carrying out the existing command has become a final goal for the genie, the genie will simply disregard any subsequent attempt to countermand the previous command. And uh, one option would be try to build a genie such that it would automatically present the user with a prediction about salient aspects of the likely outcomes of a proposed command asking for confirmation before proceeding. And such a system could be referred to as a genie with a preview. But if this could be done for a genie, it could likewise be done for a sovereign. So again, this is not a clear differentiator between a genie and a sovereign. So, so there must be something else. And uh, the ability of one cast to mimic another extends to oracles too. A genie could be made uh, to act like an oracle if the only commands we ever give it are uh, to answer certain questions. An oracle in turn could be made to substitute for a genie if he asked the oracle what, the, what the, the easiest way is to get certain commands executed. And the oracle could give us step-by-step -step instructions for achieving the same result as a genie would produce, or it could even output the source code for a genie. And similar points can be made with regard to the relationship uh, between an oracle and a sovereign. But the real difference uh, between the three casters, therefore, doesn't reside in the ultimate capabilities that they would unlock. Instead, the real difference comes down to alternative approach to the control problem. Each case uh, cast corresponds to a different set of safety precautions. The most prominent feature of an oracle is that it can be boxed. One might also try to apply domesticity motivation selection to an oracle. A genie is harder to box, but at least domesticity may be applicable. A sovereign uh, can neither be boxed nor handled through the domesticity approach. And if uh, these were the only relevant factors, then the order of desirability would seem clear. An oracle will be safer than a genie, which will be safer than a sovereign. And any initial differences in convenience and speed of operation will be relatively small and easily dominated by the gains in safety obtainable by building an oracle. However, there are other factors that need to be taken into account as well. When choosing between castes, one should consider not only the danger posed by the system itself, but also the dangers that arise out of the way it might be used. A genie must obviously give the person who controls it enormous power, but the same holds for an oracle. A sovereign, by contrast, could be constructed in such a way as to curb no one person or a group any special influence over the outcome, and such that it would resist any attempt to corrupt or alter its original agenda. What is more, if a sovereign, sovereign's motivation is defined uh, using indirect normativity, then it could be used to achieve some abstractly defined outcome, such as whatever is maximally fair and morally right, without anybody knowing in advance, what exactly this will entail. And this will create a situation analogous to a Rolfian whale of ignorance. Such a setup might facilitate the attainment of consensus, help prevent conflict, and promote a more equitable outcome. And another point which uh, counts against some types of oracles and genies is that there are risks involved in designing a superintelligence to have a final goal that doesn't fully match uh, the outcome that we ultimately seek to attain. For example, if we use a domesticity motivation to make the superintelligence want to minimize some of its impacts on the world, then we might uh, thereby create a system whose preference ranking over possible outcomes differs from that of the sponsor. The same will happen if we build AI to place a peculiarly high value on answering questions correctly or on faithful obeying individual commands. Now, if sufficient care is taken, this should not cause any problems. There will be sufficient agreement between the two rankings, uh, at least insofar as they pertain to possible words to have a reasonable chance of being actualized. 
and uh, that it that the outcomes that are good by the AI standard are also good by the principal standard. But perhaps one could argue for the design principle that it is unwise to introduce even a limited amount of disharmony between the AI's goals and ours. One suggestion that has been made is that we build a superintelligence to be like a tool rather than an agent. And this idea seems to rise out of the observation that ordinary software, which is used in countless applications, doesn't raise any safety concerns, even remotely analogous to the challenge discussed in this video. One might not create tool AI that is like such software, like a flight control system, say, or a virtual assistant, only more flexible and capable. Why build a super intelligence that has a will of its own? On this line of thinking, the agent paradigm is fundamentally misguided. Uh, instead of creating an AI that has beliefs and desires and that acts like an artificial person, we just should aim to build regular software that simply does what it is programmed to do. And this idea of creating software that simply does what it is programmed to do is, however, not so straightforward if the product being created is a powerful general intelligence. There is, of course, a trivial sense in which all software simply doesn't uh, does what it is programmed to do. The be behavior is mathematically specified by the code, but this is equally true for all casts of machine intelligence, uh, tool AI or not. If instead simply doing what it is programmed to do means that the software behaves as the programmers intended, then this is a standard that, that ordinary software very often fails to meet. And because of the limited capabilities of contem contemporary software, the consequences of such failures are manageable, ranging from insignificant to very costly, but in no case amounting to an existential threat. However, if it's uh, insufficient capability rather than sufficient reliability that uh, makes ordinary software existentially safe, then it's unclear how such software could be a model for a safe superintelligence. It might be thought that uh, by expanding the range of tasks done by ordinary software, one could eliminate the need for artificial general intelligence, but the range and diversity of tasks that a general intelligence could profitably perform in a modern economy is enormous. It will be infeasible to create special purpose software to handle all of those tasks. Even if it could be done, such a project uh, would take a long time to carry out before it could be completed. The nature of some of the tasks would have changed and new tasks would have become relevant. And there will be a great advantage to having software that can learn on its own to do new tasks and indeed to discover new tasks in, in, in need of doing. But this would require that the software be able to learn, reason, and plan, and to do so in a powerful and robustly across-domain manner. In other words, it would require general intelligence. So we come to the same point again. Especially relevant for our purposes is the task of software development itself. There will be enormous practical advantages to being able to automate, the, automate this. Yet the capacity for rapid self-improvement is just a critical property that enables a seed AI to set off an intelligence explosion. If general intelligence is not dispensable, is there some other way of constructing the tool AI idea so as to preserve uh, the reassuringly passive quality of a humdrum tool? Could one have a general intelligence that is not an agent? Uh, intuitively, it's not just the limited capability of ordinary software that makes it safe. It's also uh, its lack of ambition. There's no subroutine in Excel that secretly wants to take over the world if only it were smart enough to find a way. The spreadsheet application doesn't want anything at all. It just blindly carries out the instructions in the program. What uh, one might wonder, stands in the way of creating a more general intelligent application of the same type. An oracle, for example, which uh, when prompted with a description of a goal, will respond with a plan for how to achieve it. In much the same way that Excel responds to a column of numbers by calculating a sum without thereby expressing any 
uh, preferences regarding its output or how humans might choose to use it. The classical way of writing software requires the programmer to understand the task first, uh, to be perform it in sufficient detail to formulate an explicit solution process uh, consisting of a sequence of mathematically well-defined steps expressible in code. And this approach works for solving well-understood tasks and is to credit for most software that is currently in use. Uh, it falls short, however, when nobody asks or knows uh, precisely how to solve all of the tasks that need to be accomplished. There is where techniques uh, from the field of artificial intelligence become relevant. In narrow applications, machine learning might be used merely to fine tune a few parameters in a largely human designed programs. A spam filter, for example, might be trained on a corpse of hand classified email message messages in a process that changes the weights that the classification algorithm places on various diagnostic diagnostic features. And uh, in a more ambitious application, the classifier might be built so that it can discover new features on its own and test their validity in a changing environment. And even more sophisticated spam filter could be endowed with some ability to reason about the uh, uh, trade-offs facing the user or about the contents of the message it's classifying. In neither of these cases does the programmer need to know the best way of distinguishing spam from ham, uh, only how to set up an algorithm that can improve its own performance uh, via learning, discovering, and reasoning. And uh, with advances in artificial intelligence, it will become possible for the programmer to offload more of the cognitive labor required to figure out how to accomplish a given task. And in an extreme case, the programmer will simply specify a formal criterion of what uh, counts as success and leave it to the AI uh, to find a solution. And to guide its search, the AI would use a set of powerful heuristics uh, and our method to discover structure in the space of possible solutions. It will keep searching until it found a solution that uh, satisfied the success criterion that the AI would then either implement the solution itself or report the solution to the user. Rudimentary forms of this approach are quite widely deployed today. Nevertheless, software that use AI and machine learning techniques uh, so it has some ability to find solutions that the programmers hasn't anticipated. Functions for all practical purposes, like a tool and that poses no existential risk. We will enter the danger zone only when the methods used in the search for solutions become extremely powerful and general. That is, when they begin to amount to general intelligence and especially when they begin to amount to super intelligence. There are two places uh, where trouble could could then arise. First, the superintelligent search process might find a solution that is not just unexpected, but radically unintended. This could lead to a failure of one of uh, the types I already discussed. It's most obvious how this could happen in the case of a sovereign or genie, which directly implements the solution it has found. If making molecular smiley faces or transforming the planet into... Uh, paper clips is the first idea that the superintelligent discovers that meets the solution criterion, then smiley faces and paper clips we get. But even an oracle, which if all else goes well, merely reports the solution could become a cause of perverse instantation. The user asks the oracle for a plan to achieve a certain outcome or for a technology to serve a certain function. And when the user follows the plan or constructs the technology, a perverse instantiation can ensue, just as if the AI had implemented the solution itself. And uh, the second place where we can get the trouble is in the course of the software's operation. If the methods that the software used to search for a solution are sufficiently sophisticated, they may include provisions for managing the search process itself in an uh, intelligent manner. And in this case, the machine running the software may begin to seem less like a mere tool and more like an agent. Those, the software may start by developing a plan for how to go about its search for solution. And the plan may, plan may specify which areas to explore first and with what methods 
and what data to gather, what time to spend on, and how to make best use of available computational resources. And in searching for a plan to satisfy the software's internal criterion, the software may stumble on an unorthodox idea. For example, it might generate a plan that, that begins with the acquisition of additional computational resources and elimination of potential interrupters. Such uh, creative plans come into view when the software's cognitive abilities reach a sufficiently high level. This is what we call general intelligence and then super intelligence. And when the software puts such a plan into action, an existential catastrophe may ensue. Now, I want to summarize what I've discussed so far. Well, Oracle is a question answering system. Jenny is a command executing system. Sorin is a system designed for open-ended autonomous operation. And Tool is a system not designed to exhibit goal-directed behavior. Well, moreover, further research will be needed to determine which type of system will be safest. The answer might depend on the conditions under which the AI would be deployed. The Oracle cast is obviously attractive uh, from a safety standpoint, since it would allow both capability control methods and motivation selection methods to be applied. It might do seem to simply dominate the sovereign cast, which would only allow motivation selection methods. However, an Oracle could place a lot of power into the hands of its operator, what might be corrupted or might apply the power unwisely, whereas a sovereign would offer some protection against these hazards. And the safety ranking is therefore not so easily determined. And a genie can be viewed as a compromise between an oracle and a sovereign, but not necessarily a good compromise. In many ways, it would share the disadvantages of both. The apparent safety of a tool AI, meanwhile, uh, may be illusory. In order for tools to be versatile enough to substitute for super intelligent agents, they may need to deploy extremely powerful internal search and planning processes. An agent like behaviors may arise from such processes as an unplanned consequence. <clears throat> in that case, it will be better to design the system to be an agent in the first place so that the programmers can more easily see what criteria will end up determining the system's output. See you in my next video.